Thank you, Heidi. Ha Good morning, happy new year and happy Epiphany Sunday. I'm so glad to see you all this morning. Um, we have a lot to celebrate going forward. So we have two announcements today, one from Ray Richen. Would you want to start us off? Sure. I have news from the city and our Interfaith Alliance. Um, <clears throat> I'm pleased to be able to tell you that the Portland housing bond, which we passed in 2018, last month began the begin building of a Crescent Court Apartments. And it's the first of 10 new projects that are coming. Um, and after that, early in this year will be Las Adelitas. Those of you who helped move people out of the uh, mobile home park will remember that there was a derelict um, uh, mall just north of the mobile home park and that's being turned into apartments. Um, these two new projects will give us 279 new affordable uh, uh, units online in East Portland and in the Cully neighborhood, which is the neighborhood just north of us. They, they will be joined by, they will join two other projects that were rebuildings of uh, apartment complexes, the Ellington and the East Burnside apartment. The Portland Housing Bond reminds us that we can accomplish many things when we stand together and imagine a better future for our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. And Katie Zalen was going to make an announcement. Katie, are you here? Scrolling through, I don't think I see her yet. Um, Amy Lawrence, would you want to make the announcement from Reopening Task Force? Me? I'm asking you to, un okay, there we go. Oh, I yeah. got it now, thanks. <laughs> you, yeah. So uh, we just wanted to, I'm, I'm representing today the, the reopening task force. And we just wanted to make a brief announcement to let you know that uh, we are paying attention to all of the latest updates that have happened with regard to um, certain religious services and congregations. Um, we've looked at those and, and we still feel like we're on the right course with um, keeping our services on Zoom and limiting um, the numbers of people who are in the building. But it's something we look at, we're continuing to meet on a monthly basis. And uh, as soon as anything changes, we'll be sure to share that with you. Thank you, Amy. So we have um, an 1130 deacons and shepherds meeting. Um, and you have the link for that, but if you don't have the link, um, be sure and ask myself or Ray Richen or Sue Graff, and we will give you that link. Um, let's continue to hold in prayer all of those with COVID. Um, I know my sister, a whole bunch of cousins, and an uncle's in the hospital with COVID. It's really getting closer and closer to each one of us. I bet we all have someone we know and love that has COVID. And my prayer is also that we can stay strong in this last little bit before everyone has the vaccine so that we can make it, so that all of us will cross over into this time of being together. And now we will enter our time of worship with the call to worship. And I want to tell you that the processional that we will have um, was filmed last year, obviously not this year. <laughs> Thank you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's. But the Lord will arise upon you, and the glory of the Lord will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. 
Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Let us worship God. And now enjoy this hymn and processional and sing along. Now, please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Glorious God, whose glory appears in all that is good and holy, forgive us when we forget to lift up our eyes and look around at what you are doing in the world. Forgive us when we give up, lovingly set us back on your way of love and life. Transform us, we pray, in your son's likeness. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You are loved and forgiven. See and be radiant. Let your heart thrill and rejoice.
May the light of peace shine forth from you all today. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Also with all of you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Happy New Year. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Go ahead. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace, 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 And now Nancy Fryer is going to lead us in a moment with the children. Good, good morning, everyone and children of all ages. I want to wish you a happy new year. But today is also a celebration at church called Epiphany. So everyone say Epiphany. And now you ask, what is exactly Epiphany? Well, think about Christmas. And we know that there was Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus and angels and shepherds and animals. And there were wise men. But wait a minute. The wise men weren't really there right on the day that Jesus was born. In fact, it took them a long, long time to get there. And as we know, they were following a star and they brought with them something special just in case there was something really special going on. So when they got to the manger, they knew that baby Jesus was special and they gave him what was very unique and rare. And this is it. If you, you can see this, that's frankincense and that's actually myrrh. And what frankincense and myrrh is, is it's out of trees. Imagine sap, like a maple syrup. It comes out of a tree when you put a hole in it. And then it hardens, the myrrh and frankincense and myrrh hardens. And the thing is, it is very rare and very expensive. And so the wise men, knowing that Jesus was somebody who was going to be very special, gave frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And frankincense smells Wonderful. I wish we had a smell of vision so you could, but maybe next year we can smell frankincense and myrrh. So thank goodness to the wise men going to the manger. Happy Epiphany. Thank you so much, Nancy. Maybe next year we will smell it. All of us can <laughs> see what it smells like. And now we come to a time of the prayer for illumination and scripture readings. Good morning, everyone, and happy new year. Pray with me. In this time of the longest nights, when we're looking to the future, God, remind us that you are the source of all light and that by your word, you give light to our soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. So our first reading this morning is our opening prayer it's from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you. And his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. 
lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant and your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you and the wealth of the nations shall come upon you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epha, and those from Sheba shall come and they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our second reading is a story we all know from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage as well. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, it stopped they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as part of the sermon today, we're going to talk about the star words. Um, Lee and Darcy put together a beautiful article for the broadcaster. And I know that I am missing getting my star word our family has all our star words around the house um, and we've looked at them throughout the year. The word that comes to my mind this year is courage. I was praying and studying for the sermon and nothing was really making me excited and making me feel like um, I was being true to how I was really feeling until I saw Tori had a post on Facebook about a fortune she'd gotten in a fortune cookie. And it inspired me so much. The fortune cookie said, real courage is moving forward even when you don't know the outcome. And that's kind of where we all are today. We're in a time where We've left a year that has been really hard for a lot of us. Um, if you look at the different titles of articles in newspapers and magazines, you have how to live when you can't look forward to anything. Um, there's not a lot of joy that people are talking about right now, but there is a lot of hope out there. So one of our passages for today, Isaiah 60, really speaks to this. You've had three generations in exile, and now they're getting to come back to the land of Jerusalem that they left, and it's in destruction, basically, and they have the hope of rebuilding. 
So you have 59 chapters of Isaiah that are not very uplifting. And then you get to Isaiah 60 and you have arise, shine for your light has come. I wonder if the people <laughs> felt a little bit like we do. Really? There's hope? Do we dare hope? Do we dare have the courage to look forward to something? Um, and I believe that Isaiah and God, God's self would remind us, yes, there is reason to hope. One very interesting thing about the passages of Isaiah is that finally in Isaiah 60, the glory of God is present and the glory of God has been absent for 59 chapters. And the word glory in Hebrew meant weight, the weightiness of God. It actually is connected to the word for liver, which is the heaviest organ in the body. <laughs> so the weight of God. If you think about your life and what you give weight to, what weighs the most? Like, do we let seeking after God's way weigh the most? Or what our friends think of us or what image we're trying to project or a number of other things that we end up letting way more in our lives. So even this kabod Yahweh, this glory of God is what Elijah waited for in the crevice on the mountain. And if you remember, the glory of God wasn't in the great storm. It wasn't in anything except for the still small voice. And that's what Elijah waited for and then was able to be in the presence of God. So Isaiah is saying, finally, you'll be in the presence of God again. So we, as Christians, believe that, like Hebrews tells us, the radiance of God's glory is found in Jesus. And we have the wise men follow the star, the magi follow the star. And underneath the star is the radiance of God's glory, is Jesus. So today, we think about this weightiness of God. We think of the weight of our faith. And I was reminded about Christmas Eve 1914. I'm sure many of you know this story. On the night of Christmas Eve, in many locations, on the front lines of World War I, peace broke out. During Christmas Eve, soldiers began to sing traditional carols across the void of destruction known as no man's land, each in their own language. And on the following morn, Christmas day, many laid down their arms and joined their mortal enemies to enjoy a peaceful communion. This pause for peace in the midst of war was not welcomed by the leaders of the effort. You have the British Second Corps commander was very upset about this. And the corporal, then Corporal Adolf Hitler was not happy about this. And he said, such a thing should not happen in wartime. Have you no German sense of honor? And that honor is related to the word for glory, the weight. Are you letting your Christianity outweigh your German sense of honor? Well, these soldiers over a hundred years ago sang together, O Come All Ye Faithful and other favorites. They exchanged gifts. They threw cigarettes at each other and cards and other things that mean a lot when you're in no man's land. They remembered their allegiance to God and to the birth of Christ and let that weigh something in that moment. Well, here we are, a beautiful, a beautiful moment, a moment of transition in so many ways, transition for the church, transition for humanity as we look forward to a vaccine. We have so many different things going on. 
and courage, having courage to step forward in the midst of feeling the unknowns, in the midst of not knowing what's going to happen. I can tell you for myself, um, at the end of 2019, I had every day almost mapped out for 2020. For 2021, <laughs> not so much. I'm going into it thinking, okay, God, what's gonna happen today? <laughs> and we've all kind of slowed down and we're more in the present moment. And that's not something that, I think that's not something as Americans that we're used to doing. We like to plan. We like to feel like we have a sense of control. But perhaps our greatest control, our greatest sense of being ourselves can be found in knowing that we're the children of God, that we are beloved, that we are called, that we have a place that we belong. We belong in God's household. We belong in God's family. We belong together. Isaiah 60 exhorts the people of Israel to arise out of the darkness of despair and despondency, to greet the light of God coming into their midst. Can we arise out of the darkness of despair and despondency to greet the light of God coming into our midst? We don't know what that looks like, but we can have the courage to keep, to keep moving, to keep going. So I would like to share this prayer with you. And then I would like us to think about the words and we'll do kind of a Lectio Divina and choose our word together. So first, this is a, a beautiful prayer written by Sarah Bessie. And I invite you, if you would like to put your hand over your heart and really take in, take in this prayer. Let's pray. May the God of compassion and open doors be with us this coming year. Everything sad won't come untrue this year. And this year will hold its own tragedies and sorrows. We'll relearn lament and fight for joy. May we show up with courage and faithfulness for our lives and our callings and our people. May we be restored and renewed even in this exile. May the wilderness become our cathedral and our altar. May we say goodbye to the things that do not serve us, the selfishness, the fear, the illusions of control, the bitterness, the self-pity, the martyr complex, the us and them fire stokers, and say hello to wisdom, to kindness, to justice, curiosity, wonder, goodness, possibility, peacemaking. May we throw open the doors of our lives to the disruptive, wild, healing Holy Spirit. May this be a year of unclenched hands and new songs of vaccines and reunions, of good food and laughter, of kind endings and new beginnings. May we be given a mustard seed, mustard seed of faith. It will be enough to notice and name what you love in particular about your life as it stands. May 2021 bring you goodness and courage, hope and love, resilience and a hand to hold even on the nights with no stars. Amen. And now I invite you to maybe close your eyes and hear these words to choose from and think about which word stands out to you. And then if you would like, you could put that in the chat to share with others. Praise, mystery, persistence, contentment, kindness, delight, imagination, comfort, peace, openness, confidence, rest, creativity, 
courage, comfort, grace, curiosity, eagerness, beauty, celebration, sharing, compassion, curiosity, singing, passion, patience, unity, friendship, laughter, strength, freedom, mercy, vision, dream, renewal, listening, perseverance, hopefulness, restraint, consideration, resilience, knowledge, clarity, wonder, joy, revelation, leadership, discipline, justice, flexibility, accompanying, wisdom. And I'll close with the beautiful prayer written by Lee and Darcy. Let us pray. God, we acknowledge that we are not always ready to receive your best gifts for us. You have given us an epiphany word in order that our searching will bring us to you. Help us to be open to the gift that you offer us now through our star words. We don't know what this word might mean for our faith, but we receive it from you with gratitude and pray that your spirit will enable us to live into our word with intentional faithfulness. Amen. Amen. And now we sing hymn 744. Now we come to our time of communion. If you have not gathered something to eat and drink, you may take this moment to go do that. Now we come to the feast set before us. Gather something to eat and drink, something to share at this virtual table before us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O oh God, God of majesty and splendor. By your power, you created all that is, making a universe out of chaos and ruling over things in love. Throughout the ages, you called people to love and serve you 
and to be your light to all. You kept calling your people back to you. In the fullness of time, you revealed your love in sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. He came to heal our brokenness and to set before us the ways of justice and peace. Therefore, we praise you, giver of light. We have seen your glory in the one who dwelt among us. He lived for you, spoke your truth, and showed your love. Lavished with gifts from the Magi, baptized by John in the Jordan, turned water into wine and died. He was raised by you so that we might also be raised to eternal life. And when Jesus was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat whatever, whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, he took and poured the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which was shed for you. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Illumine our hearts, O God, with the radiance of Christ's presence that our lives may show forth Christ's love in this weary world. Hear us as we pray as your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The feast is for everyone here. Everyone, come and enjoy. Have some bread. Oh my goodness. Good enough. Getting much mocha. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, from east and west, from north and south, you have gathered us at your table, called us your beloved and fed us from your very body. Transform us to be your body in the world and fortify us by your spirit so that we may serve you and our neighbors with great joy. Amen. <coughs> and now we sing hymn 314, Christ Be Our Light. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Many thanks to Donovan for her help today and for all that participated in the worship service, for all of you. Now we come to our benediction. See and be radiant, thrill and rejoice. Let your light shine for all to see.